Valerie and I have come together because we want to settle, or perhaps not so much settle, but put forward arguments for how you press your seam. So we've entitled this Seams Common Sense because there's an awful lot of talk goes around the quilting grapevine. Do you press your seams open? Do you press them to one side? Why do you do this and why do you do that? No one always seems to know. And I thought perhaps if we had a little chat about it and talked about what we did and why we did it, it might make a little bit of common sense. So this is seams common sense. Right, Valerie, what do you usually do with your seams? Well, traditionally, I would notch them or latch them. So my seams remain closed and they all go to one direction. I, in an ideal world, they go to the darker of the two fabrics because I was brought up with hand patchwork and with hand patchwork you have to have closed seams. If you open the seam, press it open and pull it, it's a very weak seam. So my uh, machine work m moved from my hand work and in, back in those days we kept the seams closed, uh, it made for a stronger seam, we believed, and then we could just avoid the seams with our quarter inch hand quilting, which is what we used to do then, and then we would be a quarter inch away from all those seams. Right, that I understand and that I take on board. Go back from your hand patchwork to patchwork over papers. Yeah, I don't do All that. patchwork over papers, the seams were opened. Yes. Because when you put the pe yes. patchwork together and all the original patchwork yes. was almost always done over papers. Yes, so but seams that was started a, Yes, absolutely. No, I'm with you. being open. Then the hand patchwork came in and yes, I quite agree pushing it to one side when it's hand stitching. Because the theory goes and how people say is that when you stitched it on the uh, by the machine or by hand, if you push it to one side and there becomes a small hole, i.e. the stitching parts, there's a bit of fabric underneath it which will stop the wadding or anything from popping through the little hole. I put forward the argument that if you press the seams open and flat, the stitching that goes in between when done on a machine is certainly strong enough to very rarely part. Now in a quilt situation, on a quilt, if you press your seams open and flat, you're not going to be putting an awful lot of strain on the seams at all. Consequently, it's rare for a hole to appear if you've actually sewn it properly on the machine or even by hand because there's no strain. All your garments that you're wearing, particularly the high, well tailored garments, are all sewn together and every seam is open and flat. Inside that garment is a body and bodies have a habit of growing. How many times do your seams actually become undone? The answer is not often. No, but I have a problem with if this is open and I, um, with my sewing machine, want, or with, um, yeah, with my sewing machine, want to quilt in the ditch. A, there's no ditch, and secondly, if you quilt absolutely in here, you're just quilting over And holding thread. the stitches down. Yes, just that quilting over the I thread. can well understand. But if you're going to stitch in the ditch, you've actually got to hit the ditch. Yes, and you do. And many it, and people it moves. don't, and the ditch can move. My advice to quilting on that would be to stitch outside of it. Yeah, well, that's what I usually now, say. But there are stitch, feet that stitch in, in the, the ditch. ditch. And if you have any press the seams open and flat, yes, you are only stitching on the thread. Now, if you push the seams to one side, you actually get a distinct ledge mm -hmm. in the fabric. It's worth mm -hmm. trying this. Mm -hmm. Try no, it. No, absolutely you do. If when you're at home, try stitching various squares together and actually doing, Valerie calls it, you call it? Nest, notching them notching. together. Notching them I've together. heard it called latching, I've also heard it called yeah. nesting. And how you do nesting is one lot of seams get pushed one way and one lot of seams get pushed the other. When you then push the central seam that goes together, you get actually a ledge. Now, long arm quilters don't like the ledge because on a long arm machine, according to several I've heard, is that the machine tends to jam on the yes. raised ledge because yes. you've actually got, and if you count, I mean, try it at home, you've got five layers one you've side got a huge amount of and only three there. the other. Yes. And walking feet, particularly some of the machine's walking feet, they jam on this little ledge. So if you want a flatter piece of work, then if you press the seams open and flat, you actually will get it flatter. And this piece has the seams pressed open and flat and is considerably flatter than a piece where we've got yes. here, where you've got the ledge. 
You'd agree with that? Absolutely. So your problem, and the only reason really for pushing it to one side. Now the other problem is with pushing it towards the dark, sometimes, perhaps if you're doing something like seminal, you can't push it towards the No, you'll get the, dark. the shadow through. You get the shadow. Yes, you and do. there are occasions when people say, oh, you must push it towards the dark. Why? Why can't you push it in the other direction towards the light? Because rather than going towards the dark, you go in the other way. But you see, if you open it, you get rid of the problem. That then means I don't have either a bulge and I get my dark on my dark and my light on my light. Now, that's one argument. Another argument for pressing open your seams gives you vision of where you stitch through. Absolutely, and I'm, I'm all for that, having the yes. visuals. Um, yes. This is where I feel it really does work well. This is a flying goose block. And having done the flying goose block, I pressed both sides open. And when you join the second triangle on, here in the seam, I can see very clearly the top of this triangle. It's there in the seam. Now, had I pressed it all that away, there is still a chance to actually see it, which is pressing it towards the light, because I can just see where that stitching crosses the color there. But had I pressed this piece in the other direction, no, then it's invisible. you haven't got a clue as to where no, the point no. is. You have to have, you definitely have to have your patchwork working with you. And I feel that if you press it open all the time, you're very often going to see the information in the seam as to where to stitch through. For instance, if you take two half square triangles and join them together, I can see where the points are on this side. And if I turn it over, and open, open the, the seam, middle. Yes. not only do I spread the load, but I get a very clear V-shape, and it is the bottom of the V-shape that will be the top of all the points on the right no, side. Absolutely, I agree with you, absolutely. And you also remember to chop your ears off, so ears off as well, please. Ears here, ears here, four lots of ears. And the quickest way to chop the ears off, if you want a quick tip, is fold the shape, don't do anything with it and press ears off to begin with, cut them off properly, and you only need two snips. Open the seam and then in the seam you will find information about where to stitch. And I do feel very strongly these days that if you want a flatter piece of work, there was a piece of work I'm sure I was judging not long ago, beautiful piece of work, but it had steps in it. Mm. Because mm. she'd got five layers one side, three the other, and this immaculate piece of work but Have these steps? Uh, yes, but don't you think that's also too, that's part of the patchwork evolving. We're using different machines now. We're de we, you're talking about long arm quilting. I mean, when you and I both started, Absolutely. that didn't yes, exist. It didn't and exist we didn't. We, the bulk in the centre of, of an eight pointed star definitely exists. And I can remember being told to actually spin that, yeah. which is yes. why I think that we, you know, I would certainly, I tell all my students to open it because you get this visual. Absolutely. I mean, you take something like, say, a log cabin. I know this is done on the overlocker, but log cabin seams would automatically get pressed to one side. Yes, and they, they just go, do. They go f out from the centre. Yeah, out from so the centre. I think different patchwork uh, does ask you to, yes. to, to do different yes, things. I and, all, and it is constantly evolving. So I to, think we, it, we all need to listen to us all. I think we need to listen to all. I think the nice thing about Just Hands On is it gives you experts' opinion, okay, and convenience, because mm. you can sit down. I mean, you could Google all this. Yes. But you might not get relevant information. You don't get anybody arguing and discussing you it don't like get we anyone do. Arguing, no, at all, yeah. <laughs> but I think with seams, for seams common sense, you do with your seams what seems commonsensical at that moment in time. Do not always be swayed just because Flossie down the road said, oh, you've got to do it that way. You don't have to. Both Val and I do very different things at very different times. And that's why you watch Just Hands On, because you get the experts. <laughs>